everybody, welcome back to another episode. So today we're going to discuss the rotary tool. And we're gonna discuss how to set it up in Lightburn and how to set it up in the machine. This, this device here is an absolute money maker if you use it the right way um, and you promote yourself the right way. These things will help you produce all types of tumblers and glassware. And typically, if you're not doing a complete 360 degree wrap, uh, your graphic usually takes about, say about three to five minutes to complete. And you're typically charging in the range of 10 to 20, maybe even $30, depending on what you're putting on these tumblers. So the Thunderbolt coupled with the rotary tool is a complete money maker and everybody's got a water bottle everybody has some type of tumbler that they carry around and they all want it personalized so if you don't have one of these it's a very good idea to get one but if you do have one we're going to teach you exactly how to use it and it's really not that difficult so let's move over to the computer and we will discuss uh, how to set it up in Lightburn, and then we're going to go through some of the features and the adjustments that need to be made on the tool itself. All right, so let's discuss the processes that we have to do in Lightburn to make sure that the rotary is functioning okay. <clears throat> so we go to our laser tools and rotary setup in Lightburn. And this is where we're going to be able to pick the kind of rotary we have and also input the manufacturer's settings for the rotary. So we are using a roller. Uh, we are not using a chuck style. So let's pick roller and we'll make sure that it is enabled. We are using the A axis and this should be picked up automatically uh, via the controller and Lightburn. Um, Lightburn usually recognizes that we have a thunder controller. And on the steps per rotation, this is figured out by the manufacturer, in this case, Rotoboss. Um, we are at 4,400 steps per rotation with a wheel diameter of 25.4 millimeters. Now, the roller diameter doesn't change. That's something that is set in stone and you can measure it. it. It is the one solid piece of information that we know for sure. Um, the steps per rotation, this is how long it takes that wheel to do one full revolution. So 360 degrees from its start point all the way around to its stop point and then back. Um, so it, Typically, we don't have to mess with these settings if we're doing a three or four inch graphic on a standard tumbler. Now, if you start spinning, uh, let me grab my water bottle real quick. If we start spinning the smaller size of, of this water bottle, but engraving on the larger side, we're gonna start to cause issues. And this is where we either have to adjust our graphics or we can start to adjust our steps per rotation to get the proper sizing. And this is all because you are spinning, you know, the small part is spinning on the wheels, uh, but you are engraving a much larger diameter. Uh, so depending on which way you're going about it, you're spinning something either faster or slower than the, uh, the rotary thinks. So in that case, uh, typically I will stretch and adjust my graphic a little bit, um, unless it's really out of whack. You know, I'm spinning, I have no choice but to spin something that's much smaller than the diameter. Then I can go in here and change it. We don't wanna change the roller. Again, because this is one uh, true fact that we can measure. We can measure the size of the wheel and we know it. Um, plus it's a very small, uh, adjustment, especially when we're working with a wheel size that is one inch. Uh, let me close this out real quick and change this to inches so you can see what it looks like that way as well, just in case. Laser tools, rotary setup. So this wheel is one inch, so you have very small uh, adjustments that you can make, but in the area from zero to 4,400 and, and higher, we can make a lot of step adjustments so that we can get that full 360 degree 
turn perfect. This is going to come into play when you are doing a full wrap. Either you're going to adjust your graphic or you're going to move these steps per rotation so that the graphic uh, lines up from one end all the way around to another end. So this in a gist uh, is how we are setting up our rotary and there's nothing special to do after this unlike some other machines where you have to uh, plug the rotary into one of the other drivers and flip some switches to make everything work properly. On ours, everything is triggered automatically, so we're just plugging it in, and the machine recognizes we have our rotary connected. If your settings are correct here and saved, and let's go in here one more time, one of the main things that we need to look for when we are setting this up is we need to have the machine on and communicating because if you read here, settings read from controller successfully. Well, you need to write these settings and the machine needs to read this or the computer needs to read the settings. So if you don't have that done, then it's possible uh, these may go over in the generic form, which is like 360 degrees um, or 360 steps per rotation. Uh, I'm not sure what the roller diameter is, like 2.4 or something like that. So. In this case, we are connected to the machine. We know it by looking at our laser window here ready. We are communicating here. It's verified again in the rotary window. We have our roller rotary. Rotary is enabled. We have our steps per rotation as provided by the manufacturer. And we have our roller diameter. Let's go over to the workbench and we're going to take a look at the rotary and discuss some of the features and adjustments on that and then we'll put it in the machine. And just before we do that, this right here, this graphic is a representation of the rotary. And you're going to have your motor and we're going to go through this over there as well, but you're going to have your motor on the right side along with your plug. Your plug is going to go in over here. Your motor is over here and the free spinning side wheels are on this side. You have your back plate and you have your clasp, the little spring clasp that holds the, um, the work area or the uh, cup in place. Now one thing that I will mention is we need to make sure that this is straight and not crooked. So when we put it in the machine what we're going to do is we're going to run our red dot across this clasp and across the back plate to ensure that we are not twisted in the machine. We are straight, we are square with the gantry, and our engravings are not going to run up the cup or down the cup. It's going to be perfect just the way that we want it. All right, let's go over to the workbench. Okay, so before we discuss the rotary tool, I want to just cover a couple of things that I have around personally that make my life easier when doing rotary. Uh, one is going to be a bubble level. And this one you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, any, any type of hardware store, and it's, it's typically a chalk line level. Uh, it hangs on the chalk line when uh, masons are setting their blocks. Um, but we use this on the, level, or on, the, uh, on the cup to make sure that we are flat and con consistently in focus when we're using our rotary tool. So one of these is great to have. Of course, you can always use um, a small level like this, something that you're going to be able to see and make sure that the surface that you're engraving on is flat. Another thing that I like to keep around is denatured alcohol. Some people choose to use LA Awesome and other types of degreasers so that when you are engraving a tumbler and you're removing the paint, some of it's left behind. You're burning it off, so there's residual. So I'm using denatured alcohol and a melamine, melamine sponge um, or a magic eraser. You can get these on Amazon really cheap. I've got a bag full of them, and we're using this to, to wipe off the residual. I use a tailor's tape. Tailor's tape will help me if I have a logo and I want to mark my zero point and then my halfway around my 180 degrees um, very easy to do that and i'll use a magic marker or a pencil uh, if i'm doing a logo i can have the logo on one side and then the name on the other 
me personally, I like to do them in two different shots. Uh, I don't set up my graphic to go all the way around. Um, for me, that's uh, spinning that could possibly screw up or slip. Uh, I like doing my three to four inch logo, do them all, and then come back and I do my names. Now, up to you how you wanna do that. And what else do we have here? <clears throat> And that's really it. That's, that's what I have on hand for when I'm doing my tumblers. Now, taking a look at the rotary. And let me uh, move this around a little bit so you can see it closer and understand the workings of this, uh, of this accessory so that it's easy to use and easy to set up for you. So Rotoboss has done a great job uh, designing and setting this up to be able to fit into the uh, Thunder bolt and really be able to do a lot of different things. And th there are some limitations just because of size. Uh, but just to go over a couple of different things, um, you have your clasp here, and this is what's going to help hold the, the cup to the rollers that are spinning it. So normally we're just pushing down on that, sliding our cup in at an angle, get it in there, and set. So now this clasp is pushing down, uh, making sure that it's not slipping. We have a, an adjustment tool here, and this is where your level comes into play. You're going to raise and lower this so that you are level on the bubble level, and then you're going to tighten it down. Let me take this out, and just so you can see, we do have up and down motion here. And then also we can slide so we can fit different size tumblers and water bottles. So it'll slide forward and backwards. Also, you have the ability to move these two. So there, there's a lot of adjustments that can be made to fit whatever you need to fit. Um, you know, these rollers up here that are on the wheel, uh, they are going to slide. If you look, I can slide this backwards and forwards. Um, I believe he's going to include another uh, stop there so that the bearing will, will hold true in there. But otherwise, a lot of adjustability, uh, considering this is really designed for a very small machine. On the clasp here, uh, a lot of people are going to wonder how you're going to do a water bottle. Um, kind of difficult to get it in there and, and sit uh, correctly. And I'm going to show you real quick my method of doing it. I am taking this clasp off. So hold on to your spring. And again, lots of flexibility on this. Uh, you just have to think outside the box with sometimes taking things apart and uh, moving it. This is adjustable. This is your your front plate, and then you have your back stop, back plate. But if I'm doing a water bottle, I can flip it around like that, lower it down, move it to get everything level. And I'm sure my bench here isn't perfect, but you can see that it is quite level. And now this is gonna spin freely um, I'm spinning it from the larger diameter, not the smaller diameter, so my graphics are going to come out pretty good. And that, this is really it in a nutshell. There's, there's not a whole heck of a lot of, of um, stuff going on. It does have magnetic mounts on the bottom, so flip it this way. We've got magnetic uh, mounts on there, so not only is it cool to use if you have one of these husky tables and you can just set it to the side when you're not using it and click it, uh, magnetic, uh, hold it onto the side, but it holds itself to the honeycomb as well, which is great. And we got our motor, which we don't touch, um, our plug on the other end, and really that's about it. So now that I've kind of explained my method of thinking with doing tumblers. Um, let's move over to the machine and I will show you how we set it in there, how we get it aligned, and the rest of it's a piece of cake. One of the first things that we're gonna do before we even get started putting the rotary into the machine is we're going to hit our Z button down. 
we're gonna go down as far as it's gonna go until it gives us a warning. So let me hit that button. And also we're gonna clear out anything that we're working on, getting this out of the way. We want a good connection to uh, the honeycomb with those magnetic feet. All right, so we wanna bring the Z table to its absolute limit. And at this point, we're gonna get a, an error code or a warning that the Z axis has hit the bottom. Cool, that's what we were trying to do. Now we're gonna grab our rotary. Remember when we were discussing looking at light burn, our motor is going into the right side of the machine. Set it in. Try to get it as straight as you can. Let me bring you over here a little bit. Okay, so you have it in uh, as straight as you can, and we're going to plug in. Uh, usually the arrow side is up, or the hole side, the little notch, that's up. It should click in, and we're good. I took the clasp off, I'm gonna put the clasp back on, and we're gonna do a quick graphic on just a standard tumbler. So spring mechanism, it goes into our little slot there. We slide this down. The thread goes from the opposite side. This is probably better to do from, or while it's outside of the machine and not over the camera. But you get the idea. Now I want to lift up my clasp and put the tumbler in and slide my back wheels underneath. Now we don't want to push this back plate all the way up against the cup uh, in fear of binding. So we, these cups are never perfect. Um, they'll be different sizes even in the same lot of them. Uh, so just be careful that you're not binding the cup so that it has additional pressure from the backside stopping the spinning. I'm gonna tighten down my track system here so it doesn't walk anywhere. So I just tighten down my little thumb screw. And I believe we have this leveled. Nope, we don't. So check that level. We need it to touch the zero on this version and good. Now, as I mentioned before on the, um, in the light burn video, I'm going to run that red dot across here. And I want it to go across this clasp up front. And I can see that it's on the outside of this. So I'm going to push it and I want it right dead center of the clasp. And then it may be hard to see, actually you're not gonna be able to see it, but I'm gonna make sure that that red dot is also in the middle of the back plate. So I'm just looking for the red dot to show up on the back plate in the middle. This way I know that this is perfectly aligned under the gantry. This way my graphics aren't twisted or turned. I'm gonna start in the middle because it's going to be easy for me to position things. I have a logo here that I'm working with and I can see uh, the middle of the logo. And I have about three inches over here to work with. Just measure that out. I'm gonna make, wanna make sure that I am at three and a half inches. Right there. I'm going to set my origin by hitting the origin button and then I'll autofocus. Then it's gonna ask me to confirm. Yes, it'll move over. Touch off. And now I'm in focus. A good thing to keep in mind when you're doing rotary, leaving a little bit of space. So we have, uh, it's about, almost three and a half before it really starts to make a, a bend on this taper. 
and we really don't want people to have to spin the cup to read whatever we're putting on it. So if we stay in the three to, let's say, three and a half inches, then we should be good and, and people should be able to read it without having to rotate the cup. So that's, that's a huge thing. Um, people will notice those types of things when they're purchasing from you. All right, so this is set up. Let's go back and look to see how we set our graphic up. Something to keep in mind when we're using the rotary, we are uh, engraving on it in a position where it needs to be turned. Uh, and by that, if we had some text, uh, unless we wanted it to go up and down the cup from the bottom of the cup to the top, we would have to, to switch it. So uh, using my rotation keys, so one, one flip like this so that it is going along the cup. And keep in mind placement as well. So uh, as you saw when I put on the water bottle, the mouth of the water bottle was at the opposite side, so we would actually have to have our text looking like something like that. So keep in mind that your, your graphic has to correlate with the way that the tumbler is placed or the water bottle is placed onto the rotor, the rotary device. Bring in something that we'd like to do on this nice white tumbler. I'm just going to bring in some henna patter patterns, this mandala, and cuts and layers. Now, like I mentioned, we do want to make sure it fits within our space. And you can always use your, um, your tool layers to define that space. So we're working with a basically a three by three. So we would make this square three, uh, go back here. And height wise, we need to be a little bit larger. So three by three. I'll make this a tool layer and we can always make sure that it just fits inside there so we know exactly what we're working with. Not 100% necessary uh, to make the tool layer, but if you remember when I hit my origin button, uh, when I set it up on the machine, I did use center origin, so I will want to make sure that my job origin coincides with that. So that little green dot is where we're starting from. And, of course, I have cut selected graphics, use selected origin on, so I must select the graphic I want. And at this point, the only thing that I have to do is set up um, my speeds and powers. So for this, this cup, I know it's an Arctic that has a thin white coating on it. Um, I'm going to go for 400 millimeters per second. And let's do about 20 percent power we'll see if we can get through it with that and my lines per inch um, with the 1.5 inch lens i'm going to say 400 lines per inch now these are all things that you are probably going to uh, learn as you go we do have um, some set standards but experimenting and seeing what works for you, the outcome that works for you is going to be best. Let's click OK. I send it to the machine. OK, and now we can go over to the machine and check out what's going on over there. OK, as we can see, our file did come over. We have a picture of our file. Um, I am going to hit the frame button once I move the camera over just to show you how if you set it up in the center origin and you have all of your dimensions right for your graphic, what it should look like when it does your frame. So let's slide this over a little bit and you see that I'm going to hit the frame button and then uh, once I confirm the frame I'll be using my start button and engraving this tumbler. Alright so <clears throat> this is all set up ready to go. I'm going to hit the frame button. It's going to move down to the bottom left hand corner of the cup and just do a quick grid. Uh, so it's going down to the bottom left, across, up to the top right, and then across to the top left, and then back to where we're starting from. Very simple, just verifying it's going to engrave in the area that we want. Check one more time. 
looks good. And now we can hit start and make our first cup. Once your rotary job is done, you are going to push down on your, um, your clasp, slide it out, and good to go. And then if you were doing something on the other side, you would simply just flip it and you're ready to go again. And that's as simple as it gets. Um, the big thing to remember is this is flexible and by that uh, the wheels move the clasp can come, come off don't get stuck in in the uh, the mindset that it is what it is and I just have to work with it no you can move the the remove the uh, the clasp you can move these wheels to make adjustments so that things that you're working on will fit properly so once your your uh, cup job your uh, tumbler is done it's going to look like this it's not going to be shiny it, it's usually going to be uh, a little sticky this is where our sponge and our whatever liquid we're going to use to clean it off come into play and just kind of wipe it down make it look all pretty and then i usually take another rag and just kind of make sure it's all clean and you'll end up with something nice like this for your customer. Appreciate you all joining, and we'll be on to the next tutorial.